Joining me now, Republican Congressman Brian Mast of Florida, a veteran of the war in Afghanistan who serves on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Congressman Mast, thanks for joining us on Sunday Morning Futures. Glad to be with you, Thank Jason. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, listen, let's start by thanking you for your service. You, you, you lost both your legs service in service there in Afghanistan. Uh, you were a warrior. Uh, your perception and your vote probably counts a lot more uh, given your service there in Afghanistan. When you hear the president say that nobody had anticipated that the, ta that the uh, Taliban would overtake the country, it, is that believable? It's not believable whatsoever. Um, but when you layer that on this report that he attempted to manipulate intelligence, that is one of the most serious charges that can be levied in the face of all of this. Let's pull back the curtain on that just a little bit and say, OK, if you're manipulating intelligence because you want a different perception, who are all the entities that are paying attention to that intelligence to try and make real time decisions for the military or for the Department of State as members of Congress. We're getting briefings from all of the intelligence agencies. They're trying to figure out if they have a consensus on, on what they believe will happen. And if all of that is being manipulated to try and reach some optical goal, which we know this is what was going on in Afghanistan, the president was trying to reach a specific optics for, for a 9-11 celebration uh, of withdrawal, then that is directly what put our service members and so many others in that danger because there was a, a, a massive misperception of what was actually going on on the ground because they tried to change that intelligence. And in my mind, that's giving aid and comfort to the enemy. Is that the growing consensus that this withdrawal date, which was picked solely by President Biden and Kamala Harris, as best we can tell, it really was to be done because we're celeb you know, we're highlighting and uh, noting the anniversary, 20th anniversary of 9-11 next Saturday. Is, was that the driving impetus to get out by August 31st? I'm not going to pretend that I can read President Biden's mind, but we know for a fact that this was the date that they originally picked to say that was going to be the exit date was 9-11. They originally picked that, uh, in my opinion, because they wanted to make a very specific optic to show to the world. And they ended up creating a situation that by every one of the president's own objectives was a failure. The president laid out, he said, my number one objective is to make sure that Afghanistan can never again be used as a launch for terrorism. He said in a different statement, uh, my number one job is to defend and protect America. I'd say he screwed both of those up pretty bad. So this July 23rd call with President Ghani, where he's saying we have to change the perception that does lead one to believe that he knows that the Taliban are actually winning the fight and they're marching on Kabul, um, but didn't really do anything about it. In fact, the administration started to move on closing Bagram, the Air Force Base, which is 25 miles to the north of the Kabul airport. Yeah. Not just change the intelligence, uh, apparently, this is, is apparently what happened, um, ignored what the true intelligence was on the ground, and then beyond that, allowed himself to be intimidated, uh, which no American should ever be intimidated, into, into withdrawing from Bagram, withdrawing from the embassy, uh, leaving on the Taliban's timeline, and, and beyond that, siding with the Taliban, seeking to give them recognition instead of siding with those that are still in Afghanistan fighting the terrorists right to this very minute. Somehow this administration, uh, the, the Biden-Harris administration, believes they have leverage over the Taliban. I, I have a hard time seeing that. If, you, if you're an American that's still in Afghanistan and not able to get out of the country, what in the world are these people supposed to do? No, the, the administration, the State Department, they have zero leverage over the Taliban. They have this fake perception that because they control some of the dollars of the AF of what has been the Afghanistan government and they're locking those up, that they have all of this control over them. They're going to be able to you know, twist their arm in these kind of ways and get people out. If they couldn't get people out through, through uh, American strength or, or their lack of projecting it, when we had people on the ground, they're not going to be able to get people out when there are no 
Americans there. The Taliban rolled through Afghanistan without having access to any of those dollars that they're saying are this, quote, leverage that they have on them. They're not extremely worried about that. And now what do they have? They have the, quote, most advanced military weaponry to go out there and do whatever it is that they want to do in Afghanistan or across other areas of the region. They have the leverage. The Taliban has the leverage in this. And beyond that, we know for a fact that they're now in close communication with China, with Iran, with Russia, with others that, that want to go in there and, one, give the United States of America a, a greater black eye in this incident, but, two, be able to extract whatever they want from that region of Afghanistan. Yeah, one of the few natural resources in Afghanistan is a big copper mine, but the Chinese have been controlling that for a long period of time. You're on foreign affairs. What's going to happen? What, do, what, is, what are the interests of Iran and Russia and specifically China? I would say Iran, Russia, and China are unified on this front, and this should concern every American. It is blacking out the United States of America from that region. If anybody thinks that, that those three nations are going to do anything to allow American intelligence, our, our ISR platforms, anything else into any of the stands, Uzbekistan, uh, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, anywhere in, in those areas of, of former Soviet Socialist Republic, they're not going to allow us in there. There's no person on the ground in there in, in those regions that are begging to say, hey, let me go become American uh, human intelligence asset and work with them because we see how well that they treated those that worked with them in Afghanistan. There's nobody begging to do that. So that means our, our most vital forms of intelligence are totally blacked out in one of the most key regions to, to go and defend against Iran, to combat China's aggression and to go out there and defend against Russia's aggression as well. That's exactly what's happening. And they are working together to make sure that, that, that we have a blindfold on when it comes to that region. Yeah, the presence of the Bagram Air Force Base was as much about uh, China and some other things as it was about Afghanistan. 